Hi, everybody. Welcome to Facepalm Studio. So this episode of Make It Monday uh, had a few bugs in it, um, which is funny because the whole video is about editing bugs and recording using OBS Studio. I was trying to record at a higher resolution to capture both the camera and the desktop. And unfortunately, I forgot to change one setting that exported things out to a lower resolution when the recording was finished. Hopefully that should be back fixed now. Um, but I want to let you guys know that some of the icons and some of the windows that you're going to be seeing in this are a little blurry. Um, if you have any trouble reading it, uh, I do apologize. Um, like I said, uh, in a moment here, this will be one of the first videos that's coming out on the channel. And it was just something that made me face palm. So I wanted to share it with you guys. So that way you could probably save yourself um, from yourselves like I should have um, while working on it. But if you guys have any questions or anything, please leave them in the comments below if something doesn't seem clear. Um, and I will try my best to answer you guys. But enjoy today's episode of Make It Monday. Thanks. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Facepalm Studio. Today's episode of Make It Monday, we're going to be talking about recording in OBS and recording in a lossless format. Because today, while I was working on getting the channel started, I, just for reference, today is the first day I'm doing any editing, recording, filming for this channel, and I was trying to get everything right, and I wanted to record in a better format so that way it worked better for the camera. And I was gonna say, you guys don't care about this, but that's why you're here. You're here because I, I face palmed so many times <laughs> while trying to figure this out. So today we're gonna be talking a little bit about how OBS works, um, what kinds of formats are supported, and as well as um, what kinds of things you can do to kind of get this working. Because I struggled with it quite a bit while even just getting this channel started. And I've been recording in OBS, uh, the Streamlabs OBS for almost three years while working with Adventures in Gaming, my other Twitch channel, I'll link it below in the comments so that way you guys can watch a stream. Um, but while also just trying to work this out and trying to get this working, it just baffled me because I'm trying to record in a better format. So let's go over a few things today and we're gonna just kind of break things down about how it works. So here, you can see me, hello everybody. Here in OBS, we are looking at the um, window view for the studio. And what we're looking at today is gonna to be some of the settings that we use for recording. Now, it probably won't let me adjust most of these settings because of how um, the process works for actually working on it, uh, the stream. But we're gonna be talking about output settings. Okay, so first we're gonna start by talking about my settings currently for what I figured out and what is working for what we have at the moment. So we're gonna come over here. This is the settings menu for OBS Studio, not Streamlabs OBS. Um, and we are going to talk about these settings here. So I'm ignoring the streaming section because I'm not gonna be using OBS Studio for streaming. I'm only gonna be using it for um, recording purposes. So we're looking down here. Right now we're in the output mode simple, which most people don't use the simple format because it doesn't have as much control. But to get lossless footage with this, you actually have to use this lossless quality, tremendously large files. And if you guys look down here, there's this error message that says, warning, lossless quality generates tremendously large file sizes. Lossless quality can use upwards of seven gigabytes of disk space per minute at high resolutions and frame rates. Now, that's true. The footage that I recorded just before this to test um, when we were looking at this a moment ago was almost, oh, I guess it was a quicker video. <laughs> I was gonna say, it's 940 megabytes, but this video here is only, 25 seconds so almost a gigabyte of data in only 25 seconds i can only imagine what this footage here is going to be when i'm done recording it um i did a test a little bit ago and i think i did a two minute long video and it was seven gigabytes so it truly is recording a large amount of file space um at a time now those file sizes even though they're large they contain more metadata for you to be able to actually record and edit out a higher quality picture quality when you're sending footage out so for an example if we're looking here so that's the lossless quality it records in an avi format but that's where i was running into trouble because premiere was not recognizing that audio format i was getting a message your final cut file could not be imported the source appears to be corrupted please use a valid Check a valid file. I was getting that message. No clue why. I thought it was the file format. I had been trying different various file formats because OBS does support 
multiple kinds of file formats. However, because of the settings, it wasn't letting any of them work. And I'm trying to record raw. Now, there are other raw formats out there. And since I'm trying to do primarily the recordings here on Windows, I didn't want to try to um, use ProRes or other formats to try to get this working. So we come down here, the message we're getting is unsupported format or damaged file, codec missing or unavailable, and or Premiere is just only audio, uh, importing audio. I had all three things happen to me. So what we needed to find was that there was the codec missing for this raw format in ABI, which the codec is how the video is translated to um, from video format to something that Premiere can recognize. And to find that format, I actually had to open the video up in VLC Media Player, which is what I have open here. And you go to Tools, Media Information, and then we come over here to codec. And this told me what codec to look for. So I had to actually install that codec file. And I'm gonna include this link in the description because it was very helpful um, when I actually came down to find it. Um, this is the Video Help Studio version for the codec. And I just wanted to make sure it was the correct full version for the format, um, downloaded it for Windows. I probably will have to download it for my Mac as well. Um, so that way I can get this codec to be a universal format at lossless quality. Um, is it the steps that I needed to do to get that? No, there's probably other ways I could have done that. And there's other versions that I am using here too. Um, but for lossless quality to get the best performance out of what we're trying to accomplish, I wanted to make sure I had the correct codec and things installed. So that way Premiere could recognize it. Cause now if we come back here into Premiere, we can see that I have the full footage. It's recording the right way. Um, and I'm able to see what the audio is coming out to. This I am recording using Streamlabs desktop. I know I was just saying that I wasn't, but I wanted to be able to show you guys the footage. Uh, I wanted to show you guys the settings in OBS Studio, not Streamlabs, of what format I'm using for recording. So right now we're in output mode simple. I have my recording path set to my raw settings, um, but these are the settings that are defaulted for simple mode. You have the same as the stream, so you can choose your encoder, choose your um, hardware and your presets to be able to capture at those resolutions to be able to get the right resolution that you're looking for. Um, you have high quality medium file size, so it'll be recording at a higher quality, but it'll be compressed, so that way it has a smaller file size for, for exporting. You have indistinguishable quality, which will be matching the input output but a larger file size, so less compression, and then lossless quality, tremendously large. That is the raw format. Now, each of these have their own settings here. For example, I can choose to record as MP4, MLV, MKV, or an FLV for these. Um, those are the ones that have audio and video linked with them. Um, if you're going to be using this, it's gonna record it out to the file that you like. Most people use MP4. However, MP4 and MOV formats do have trouble with container properties lasting if there's something crashes with the software. So that's why I'm trying to stray away from it because I want the higher quality files. Now, in this case, I am recording to an MP4 for this version of the file. And you may notice a difference in quality between the last video or the last rather, you guys know what I mean. <laughs> so when you go from high quality same as stream or indiscriminable lets you change these settings but when you go to lossless is where it's going to give you this error message saying lossless quality generates tremendously large file sizes upwards of seven gigabytes of disk space and you want to say yes and now that is going to record out to that avi format in that raw file codec that wasn't recognized by premiere right away so that's why i had to go to install um the actual um codec for this so if you're looking to record and have a little bit more control, you can switch this over to advanced. And this lets you have control over like streaming settings, audio tracks and stuff like that within um, Streamlabs Studio or OBS Studio rather. Um, however, it doesn't, it still gives you all these different container formats, but some of them aren't supported by Premiere. It's probably a codec issue the same way. Um, but I was having a hard time with it recognizing I was going to use this Makusa format or Matroska format, which is um, MKV, which supports multiple audio tracks and different layers. Um, but in this case, I'm still just going to be using, um, I'm using the simple 
simple format here. Um, but there are a lot of settings in these advanced features that we can go over in another video if you'd like. Um, but I just wanted to go through and talk about my settings for this um, and how it works related to um, streaming. Um, so now let me go back. We're going to take a look at my Premiere file now for me editing this. And so I can show you guys what it looks like now that we have a file format that's supported and what it looks like when you're trying to import it. All right. So back in Premiere, this is what we were looking at before with the file formats. So now we're going to see if the file that I recorded previously is supported and what it looks like a little bit differently. So we're going to double click in my media manager here and we're going to grab the most recent file. Um, so for that 10 minute video that I recorded at the beginning of this session here, when I was trying to get this started, it is a 23.8 gigabyte file. Now that seems large, but since we are recording in lossless quality, it is going to appear larger, but it's gonna be in a better format. So now I'm gonna say open and no errors. Since I installed that codec, we're not getting those errors about unsupported file types error messages, that kind of stuff when it comes to getting this imported. So now I should be able to just bring this file back into our scene and it's going to generate the peak file for the audio, even though I will not be using audio for this file, it is just for singing purposes to get things up and running. Um, you can see here, that's where I was getting ready to sync for the video. Um, So it's working. It, everything is all synced up how we have it here. Um, it, it is dropping frames. Again, you have some limitations when it comes to scrubbing and like live scrubbing while working on here, um, especially on Windows. I'm going to be doing some tests on the Mac to see how this works too um, and trying to see how well live scrubbing works. Because um, when you're working on the PC, especially with higher file formats and stuff like this, I have always had trouble with um, live scrubbing where on the Mac that I've been using, uh, I have a new, one of the new MacBook Pros, um, it doesn't have as much trouble live scrubbing. So I'm interested to see how that works for you guys. And I'm sure I'll be making a video about the differences for that soon too. Um, but I think that is probably about it for this video today. Um, if you guys have any more questions about what I tried to explain, if it wasn't clear, or if there have any more questions about why the lossless video format didn't seem to work um, when you first started it, or if you have other video formats you'd like to explore um, and reasons why they aren't working when you're trying to export from OBS or if you're trying to work through streaming, I'm just trying to save you guys on a little bit of pain from a face palm. Let's see if we can get those light bulb moments working a little bit better. All right, everybody, this is where I'm gonna be leaving it today. Thank you guys for watching. If you guys have any more questions about audio, recording video in OBS Studio and editing in Premiere Pro, importing these raw formats or other video format types, feel free to leave those questions in the comments below. I will also be linking in the uh, description, the articles and links that I used while working on this. So that way it can save you guys from some of those pain from those face palm moments like I had while working on this. So thank you guys for watching. We'll see you guys next time at Face Palm Studio.